Okay then, welcome back after the break. Sure. So before going to the break, we were very much clear about the closed ended fund also. Let's take things forward. Sure. Now, question number seven is what you are going to start. I am going to read the question. Probably we may discuss it for a minute, but then you have to solve it. Start. Mr. V purchased a closed ended fund. Another nav of 25 for rupees 20. Is it possible? Yes, in closed ended fund it is possible. At the end of the year, the nav fund was 27, was selling at a 5% premium. The premium or discount is calculated on the nav. Premium or discount is calculated on the nav. Okay. It did not pay out any dividend or capital gain during the year. How much was the original discount and what was Mr. V's return? Will you try it? Can, you all, can I give you all 5 minutes? Start. Come on. Come on. Start. Yes, everybody is done. So, almost everybody done. So, how much is the discount and how much is the return? Yes, very nice. So, I will also start now. Question and who is it? It is Mr. V. So, I feel Mr. Vivek made some mistakes and he had to suffer a loss but but i feel mr v is smart see he is purchasing a fund with a nav of 25 for only rupees 20 smart boy right so here we will write down nav is 25 market price is 20 so hmm can i say purchased at discount at the rate rupees 20 because this is a close-ended fund. In the break, Parmi had asked me a question that suppose if this was an open-ended fund, then, then the purchase will be at NAV, then the sales will be at NAV. Full stop. Okay? Okay. Purchased at a discount of rupees 20. So, purchase price is 20. Then, at the end of the year, the fund's NAV was rupees 27. And selling at 5% premium. So now they have given us the sales price. But sales price is also given in two ways. NAV and market price. Okay, what is the NAV? Rupees 27. And then, then there is premium of, 20, of 5%. So market price will be. 28.35 Got it? Done. Then No capital gain No dividend How much was the original discount and Mr. V's return? Okay, how much was the original discount? 
सो ओरिजिनल डिस्काउंट मीन्स एट वॉट प्राइस इट वॉज परचेज सो फाइव रुपीज वॉज द डिस्काउंट करेक्ट सो ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज वॉज द डिस्काउंट एंड दिस फाइव इज ऑन द बेस एंड दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव सो फाइव डिवाइड बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट डिस्काउंट स्टूडेंट है क्वेश्चन That sir, why have you divided it by twenty five? I'll tell you the answer. Yeah, I'll tell you the answer. You are see, you have got a discount on what? On twenty five, no? Five rupees discount is on twenty five. So if the discount is on twenty five, the comparison, the base will always be twenty five. The same thing on base discount is given. Got it? Suppose ten rupees thing is there, you purchase it for eight rupees. So two rupees discount you have got on the original price of ten. So you say two divided by ten, twenty percent discount you have got. Right. Then last thing they have asked is V is return. So selling price minus purchase price. There is no dividend, no capital gain. Divide by purchase price. Selling price is twenty eight point three five. Original uh, purchase price is twenty base twenty. So eight point three five divided by twenty is how much? Forty one point seven five percent. Got it. Majority of you were any which case able to get this answer. so the answer for part 1 answer for part Perfect. Superb. Sure. Done. Are you guys clear with all the questions, all the concepts, all the formula so far? Done. Closed-ended fund. We first understood the format, concept, formula that NAV or market price always market price for closed-ended fund. Then we converted into a formula: selling price minus purchase price plus dividend divided by purchase price will give us the return. Then we solved two sums: six and seven. V and Vivek. Done. All right, guys. Please confirm. done so now come to question number 10 it's a no brainer question come on come to question number 10 everyone let's start come on guys Okay, let's start. A mutual fund had a net asset value of rupees twenty at the beginning of the month. Made income and capital gain distribution of this and zero point zero three respectively during the month, and then ended the month with a net asset value of twenty point zero six. Calculate the monthly return. Isn't this such a simple? I mean, all you have to do is use your logic. You have to use your logic. What was your uh, NAV at the beginning? Twenty. NAV at the end? Twenty point zero six. And in between, you have got some uh, income and capital gain distribution. So money is what you have got. So tell me, what will be your return? Your what will be your return? So in this case, the return will be NAV at the end minus NAV. At the beginning, 
प्लस एनी डिविडेंड प्लस एनी कैपिटल अप्रिसिएशन और कैपिटल गेन और इनकम डिवाइड बाय नैफ एट बिगनिंग करेक्ट ओके सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन आवर क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द नैफ एट द एंड दिस इज ट्वेंटी पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स नैफ एट द बिगनिंग ट्वेंटी डिविडेंड 0.0375. Okay. Then capital gain and this 0.03 divide by 20. So tell me how much is the the how much is the return? 20.06. Minus twenty plus point zero three seven five point zero three. So this divided by twenty divided by hundred. Somebody please confirm. Zero point one two seven five divided by twenty. Into hundred, so it will be zero point six three seven five. But remember, this is for the month. How do I know? Because if you have read the question properly, mutual fund at the beginning of the month, capital gain and income distribution during the month, right? Then ended the month with a net asset value. so all of this is monthly calculate the monthly return so if it is a monthly return to so 0.6375 is per month multiply by 12 months will give me total return and that is 7.65% per annum per annum Done. Great. Osam, what is capital gain income? Give me some time. I'll explain it to you. Still, if you want, I'll just let you know what exactly is your capital gain income. But I was planning to teach it to you tomorrow. Now, see what happens is this. Suppose so now the question has been asked by Mr. S. D. Shidharth. Mr. Shidharth, suppose you have your own fund, S D Mutual Fund. From the people, pooling of money happens in mutual fund. From the people, uh, you have taken rupees ten lakh. From the people, you have taken rupees ten lakh. So, can I say your asset under management is rupees ten lakh? this you are investing in various places say for example you have invested this in shares of a shares of b uh, you have invested in gold so on and so forth you have invested in bonds like that okay now what happens is the share of a you have purchased say 1000 shares at the rate rupees 50 so can i say 50000 rupees worth of shares you have purchased correct now the value of the shares has become 85 and that was your target whenever you invest in a share you have a target so you had thought that okay this is going to be my target at 85 i will sell so now you will sell it at 85 your purchase price was 50000 what is 35000 called as if you know little bit of taxation Which would have done in your inter? This thirty-five thousand is what? Can I say this thirty-five thousand is capital gain? This thirty-five thousand is income from capital gain for the mutual fund. Income from capital gain from for the mutual fund, and this is that capital gain income which the mutual fund has got. But mutual fund has got is as good as we have got. Are you understanding, guys? That is. 
so any capital gain income that is earned is earned by the mutual fund only indirectly by the mutual fund owner also because this capital gain income dividend income eventually will be passed on to us only no right and nonetheless it is also increasing my net asset value because it is being added as a part of my asset got it got it mr sd siddharth done niharika has asked me for the explanation of uh, sir explain again last monthly return see niharika this 20.6 is end of the month this 20 is start of the month this 0.0375 is during the month 0.03 is during the month this is also monthly so can i say the return that we have got is for per month for per month so 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 suppose for one month if i have got a return of niharika if i have got a return of 0.6375 I've got it for one month. Suppose if I want to know that what is the yearly return, can I say I will multiply it by twelve months? So if for one month I am getting this much for twelve months, how much I will cross multiply? So point six three seven five multiply by twelve, and this will be seven point six five on a annualized basis. One percent per month is equivalent to twelve percent per annum. Nikarika, ma'am, am I clear? Hmm. Niyarika, please confirm. Am I clear? Okay. If not, you can ask. Sure. Done. So done with this question also. So now to come this question, question number twelve. X Y Z mutual fund, everybody. Guys, I'm still waiting for your answer. X Y Z mutual fund is the name of the question. Guys, come on. Shall we start? Yeah. Okay. The NAV of per unit X Y Z mutual fund, a closed-ended fund, a closed-ended fund on one one fourteen was rupees twenty eight. Should I write it down? Should I make a summary? Obvious, sir. Obvious. So I'll just write it down. X Y Z mutual fund is a closed-ended fund. One one fourteen was twenty-eight. It's a closed-ended fund. Was twenty-eight. The value as on thirty one twelve was comes to twenty eight point eight. So nav another nav is given twenty eight point eight, and this is as on thirty one twelve two thousand fourteen. Okay, continuing. On the same date, unit was trading in market at a premium of three percent. So on this date, the unit was trading in the market at a premium of three percent. Mm -hmm. Though on one one two thousand fourteen, same was trading at a discount of five percent. So when you are going to purchase it, you are going to purchase it. Obviously, first, then you are going to sell it, correct? Right? 
so when you want to purchase it it is trading at a so on 1114 it is trading at a discount of 5 percent so 28 less 5 percent how much is that ideally i should have given this sum for you to solve anyways now i've started it and when you are going to sell it and when you are going to sell it you are going to sell it at a premium of three percent And this will be 29.664. Got it? Got it? Okay. XYZ also distributed a sum of 2.8 as income and capital gain. You are required to compute the rate of return. So a capital gain is also being introduced. They were also earned a capital gain. Probably internally they would have sold some shares or something. So how much capital gain is earned? 2.8 per unit. We have to calculate the return. So the, see, return will have two work, ways. One is return, absolute return. Another is percentage. Selling price minus purchase cost plus capital gain will give you absolute return. This is going to give you absolute return. When you divide this by purchase cost, you will get relative return. Wow, 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 wow. So, what is the selling price? 29.664. We have calculated and we know in close ended fund, we never purchase or sell on NAV. We purchase on sale on market, premium or discount as the case may be. Purchase price was 26.6. Capital gain was 2.8 per unit. So 29.664 less 26.6 plus 2.8. So 5.864. But divided by purchase cost, which is 26.6. Am I right? So divide by 26.6 into 100. 22.0451 is the percentage return. Twenty-two point zero four five one percent. Gotcha, everybody. Please, please copy.
Okay, guys. Dan Sam. Can we present it this way or the way in the book? Either ways is okay, boy. No problems whatsoever. What is the examiner looking for? Examiner is looking for whether you have shown what is the NAV, what is the selling price, purchase price. You have added the premium. You have reduced the discount. You have written the capital gain. You have written the proper format. Everything is there. How does it matter? The presentation may be a tabular form or some formula form. Absolutely no worries at all, brother. Chalo, done. Cool. Hmm. Please come to question number 14. Steady mutual fund. Steady mutual fund. Let's start. Sure. The following information is extracted from steady mutual fund. Asset value at the beginning of the month. Annualized return. Okay. Distribution made in nature of income and capital gain per unit respectively. 0 0.5 and 0 0.32. You are required to calculate the month and net asset value of the mutual fund scheme. And they have specifically told to limit the answer to two decimals. So please do that. Second, provide a brief comment on the month and net asset value. Definitely, easily we'll be able to do it. But there is one small catch here. There is one small catch here. The return is given on an annualized basis. But if you look at all other information, Asset value at the beginning of the month. Uh, calculate the month and net asset value. Distribution again is nothing is given. But obviously it is assumed that it is on the monthly basis. So if everything else is on monthly basis. But return is on annual basis. Can I say apple to apple comparison is not possible. So if you want to do apple to apple comparison. What will we do? Can I say either bring the yearly thing to monthly level or the monthly thing to the yearly level. Now, if you look at the question, you will easily see that majority of the things are monthly. So let's bring the annual thing to monthly level. So for one month, uh, so if for 12 months, it is 15% for one month. How much? Are we clear everyone? So here we will start with this question. Pay attention. Steady mutual fund. Steady mutual fund. See ya. So we will write here that annual return is equal to 15%. However, all other data in the question is on monthly basis therefore we will convert annual return to monthly return we will convert annual return to monthly return for comparable purposes for comparable purposes so what is the annual return can i say it is 15 percent 
so if this is for 12 months how much it is for one month and we will cross multiply so 15 divided by 12 will give us 1.25 per month got it everyone right now all we have to do is use the same formula that we have can i say this is the return formula that we have this is what we will use so chalo let's write it down yeah return is equal to are you going to write this in your notes please do that yes yes good so Just a moment. Right? Okay. Now. Now, return. What is the nap at the end? It is given in the question. Tell me. No, sir. We have to calculate that. Okay, no problem. What is the return? Return is 1.25%. See, always convert the percent into absolute number. So, 1.25% can be written as 1.25 divided by 100. Percent means divide by 100. So, which is equal to how much? It is 0 0.0125. So we'll write here 0 0.0125 is equal to. I always use this. Because suppose if I write percentage here, then I will write, have to write multiply by 100, which I usually forget. So, this is my comfort way. Okay, NAV at the end is what we have to calculate. Let's put that X. NAV at the beginning they have given as 65.78. Dividend they have given, yes, as 0 0.5 and 0 0.32. So 0 0.5, 0 0.32. Divide by. Divide by what we are going to do. The NAV at the beginning which is 65.78. Right? Sure. Now let's start with the working. So 65.78 into 0.0125. So point eight triple two five is equal to X minus sixty five point oh eight seven or seven eight seven eight sorry. See, one transposition error and the whole sum could have gone for a toss. My mistake, yeah. So, 65.78 into 0 0.0125. So, 0 0.8225. Huh? Okay. So, in my calculator, I had written correctly. Cool. Point triple eight eight triple two five is equal to x minus sixty five point seven eight plus point eight three sorry point five plus point three two point eight two okay. So, this and this will go here. So, x will be equal to 65.78 minus 0 0.82 plus 0 0.822 triple 25 65.78 and they have said only till two decimal places. So, the nav does not change. Ending nav is equal to the beginning nav. Possible? Definitely possible. Got it everyone? Easy peasy sum.
चलो एंड नाउ गाइज फाइनली वी आर कमिंग टू द लास्ट सम ऑफ द डे वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन एंड देर आर टू सिमिलर क्वेश्चन वन आई एम गोइंग टू डू नाउ the next one you are going to get as homework so pay attention because otherwise you will not be able to do your homework properly mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, shall we start easy sum this was shall we start the last sum for the day cool that is question number 15 so a very nice question where you have to calculate the original and the new nav original nav we have already calculated in question 1 question 3 so it's easy for us but how do we calculate the new nav is what we will be watching in this sum let's start a mutual fund company has the following assets under it on the close of the business l m n p limited number of shares 20000 See, here it is thirty thousand. I don't know what is printed in your book, but the PDF that I have is showing thirty-eight thousand. But this is thirty thousand, so probably it can be thirty thousand in your book, or if it is thirty-eight, change it to thirty thousand. Twenty thousand and sixty thousand. First Feb market price per share is given. Second Feb market price per share is given. Total number of units outstanding six lakh units is given. Calculate the net asset value of the fund. Then, from the following information, as a net asset value of the fund, then from the following information, assume one Mr. A submits a check of thirty lakh to the mutual fund, and the fund manager of this company purchases eight thousand shares of M Limited, and balance is held in the bank. In such a case, what would be the position of the fund? And Find the nav of the fund as on first, say on the second February. So if they have asked the nav on second February, it's very much obvious that this nav is of first February. So nav as on first February. Let the game begin. Read the question. i'll give you all 2 minutes to try and then we can start it together easy peasy question at least the first part is very easy peasy calculate the nav of nav as on first feb that's pretty easy because all the information as related to first feb is given there are four particular shares l m n p okay number of shares market price per share and then you have the market value okay so my number of shares of l is how much 20000 30000 20000 60000 so 20000 this is shares 30000 60000 sorry again 20000 and then 60000 market price per share Twenty three one two point four three six one point two five zero five point one right and finally we will add the market value. Tell me the market value twenty thousand into twenty. Take it in M plus. Take it in M plus. This is four lakh. 
Then 30,000 into 312.4. Again, M plus 93,72,000. Then 20,000 into 361.2. Again, in M plus 72,24,000. And lastly, 60,000 into 505.1. Again, M plus 3 crore, 3 lakh, 6,000. And we will finally get the market value of investments. MRC, market value of investments. How much? 4 crore, 73 lakh. 2000 right divide by divide by number of units outstanding number of units is how much 6 lakh so tell me how much this work out to 78 points. So the NAV as on 1st Feb. NAV as on 1st Feb is equal to 78 point for NAV. I have told you to take how many decimals? 4 decimals. So 78.8367. Or meet. Please. So the first part is done, which was easy peasy. The second part is the most crucial. Please confirm whether you are clear with the first part so that I can move on. Done. Now come to the second part and that is very, very important. Please everybody stay focused when I am solving the second part. Please, please everybody stay focused. From the following information. From the following information, assuming Mr. A submits a check of rupees 30 lakh to the mutual fund and the fund manager of this company purchases 8,000 shares of M Limited and the balance is held in bank. So now, second part, how much the fund manager is getting? So amount received by fund manager is how much? Amount received by fund manager is how much? Can I say it is 30 lakhs? Right? Of this 30 lakhs, of this 30 lakhs, what happens? 8,000 shares of M Limited are purchased. Of this 30 lakh that you have got from the fund manager. Achha, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me one thing, tell me one thing. Uh, when this Mr. A comes, he comes with a check of 30 lakh. How many units are you going to issue him? First question that I want you to answer is this. How many units are you going to issue him? This, Mr. A has come. Mr. A has come. So here, Mr. A has come. And he has bought rupees 30 lakh. He gives you 30 lakh rupees. In return, he will expect what? Units to be given. How much units are you going to give him? Can I say based on 1st Feb NAV? See, now this is what practically happens. NAV as on 1st Feb is published after the market is over. So say by evening 6.30, 7 o'clock, the NAV will be published on 1st Feb evening 6.30, 7 o'clock, NAV will be published. This person comes to me, Mr. A comes to me on 2nd of Feb. 
now second of feb if he comes he would have come obviously during the trading hours only correct so if he has come during the trading hour suppose if he comes after the trading hours then in that case any which case 30 lakh i will not accept i will say come tomorrow but he has come on the trading hours as a reason i have accepted it so the he has come with his 30 lakh on second of feb but on trading hours so if he has come on trading hours then in that case can i say the nav will be taken of second feb or of the first feb the nav will be taken of the first feb or the second feb correct it will be taken of first feb it will be taken on first feb because second feb on day closing the nav will come but on trading hours of second you will take it of the previous day of the previous day nav are we clear everyone Okay, how much is the previous day? I have seventy-eight point eight three six seven per units. So we will get the uh, number of units issued to A. Oh, so thirty lakh. Divide by seventy-eight point eight three six seven, and that is three eight zero five three for units to decimals point three four units point three four units. A samjigudu. Clear everybody. Done. clear okay now we have received 30 lakh rupees for that we have given him 38053.34 units so we gave him 38.38053.34 and told go home now now go home whenever you want to resell it check the nav and come back so now 30 lakh rupees that we have received we will invest they have clearly said that we will invest this in shares of m limited shares of m limited and they have specifically told That they will purchase eight thousand shares of M Limited. Eight thousand shares of M Limited at the rate. Again, I have a question to each one of you. Two rates are given for M. Two rates are given for M. Three one two point four and three sixty. Which one will we take? And why? Which one will we take? And why? So we will take two one two point four three one two point four the three sixty price second five everybody is giving second five and they are wrong. We will take three one two point four. Why? I'll tell you the reason. Three sixty is the closing price of this share M Limited. This is the closing price, but we need the price during the day. Now obviously there would have been fluctuations because this is a a, a share share every second the price changes. But because we have not specified anything, the first Feb price will run till 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 the first Feb price will run till the closing price is given. So, in absence of info, the price which is prevailing will be taken, and it is assumed K. The second February price is the closing price. Is the closing price? What it? At the rate three one two point four. So how much does this work out to? Twenty four lakh ninety nine two hundred minus thirty lakh five lakh eight hundred cash. What will happen to this five lakh eight hundred cash? Will be with us. And cash is also recorded while calculating NAV. Just that cash market value is the cash price itself. As in shares price changes, bond price may change. Cash is cash. Whatever it the price is written here, that will remain. But it is a part of my net asset value. It is a part of my net asset value. It is a part of my net asset value. Okay, okay, okay. Now they have asked that. Tell us the revised price. 
sorry. Okay. Now they have asked us, tell us what, uh, in such a case, what would be the position of the fund? So what will be the position of the fund? L M sorry L N O will remain to be same. L N O will remain to be same. How much? As it is, we can write four lakh seventy two twenty four. Three crore three lakh six thousand. Correct, but as regards M is concerned, now we have thirty-eight thousand shares. Thirty thousand originally we had, plus eight thousand additionally we have. At the rate three one two point four. So thirty-eight thousand into 312.4. 1 crore 18 lakh 71,200. L, M, O, sorry, L, N, O, and M. The price is given. The price is given. So, what will be the total NAV? The total NAV value at value basis will be 4 lakh. 72.24, 3 crore 3 lakh, 6,000, 1 crore 18 lakh, 71,200 and this works out to rupees 4 crore 98 lakh, 1,200. Is there a calculation error from my end? Is it so? Is it so? Plus 5 lakh. Hidden adjustment. Hidden adjustment. Plus 5 lakh cash. Plus 5 lakh cash. 5 lakh 800. So 5 crores. So, 5 crores, 3 lakh 2000. Are we clear everyone? Please do the mathematics correctly guys. Sir, will there be an interest increase on that remaining cash? Practically 100% yes. Practically, if I am the fund manager and I have cash with me, what I will do is I will invest in some liquid fund. So probably I may earn some income from that liquid fund or or I may even keep the cash with me because if I am an open-ended fund, then there can be redemptions on a daily basis for which I will need some liquid ready with me. I may use for that. So it depends. And now, the third part of the question. Are we clear with the second part of the question, guys? Please confirm. Are we clear with the second part of the question as well? Sure. Now we can come to the third part. Let's come to the third part. Third part is simple. Find the new NAV as on February 2, 2012. So what is going to be the new NAV? So for that new NAV, can I say we will have to recalculate the market value of investments? So we will write here market value of investments but as on 2nd february right so there is a b c d a sorry m l m n o 
Okay. 20,000, 30,000, 20,000, 60,000 shares. Okay. Okay. Market price per share is given. 20.5360 right and we will get the market value and we will get the market value so 20,000 into 20.5 M plus four lakh ten thousand. Please use the M plus thirty thousand into three sixty. M plus is one crore eight lakh. Twenty thousand into three eighty three point one. M plus seventy six sixty two thousand. Sixty thousand into five zero three point nine. Again, M plus three crore two lakh thirty four thousand. Do not forget the cash. Do not forget the cash. So, how much is the cash? Five lakh eight hundred. And the total MRC works out to, oh, this is 38,000. See here, small, silly error. And it would have, I would have lost all the marks. Jeez, jeez, jeez. 30,000 plus 8,000. Even though I knew the concept, even though I knew everything, I would have lost the marks. Jeez. One crore thirty six lakh eighty thousand. So this works out to rupees total net asset works out to rupees five crore twenty four lakh eighty six sixty two hundred. Am I right or is there a calculation error? Please check. Let me check from your five crore twenty four lakh eighty six eight hundred five crore twenty four lakh eighty six eight hundred. Divide by outstanding number of units. And how much is that? So we already had 6 lakh. Plus now we have issued Mr. A. We have issued Mr. A 38053.34 units. So we already had 6 lakh units. We already had 6 lakh units plus. 38053.34 units additionally so 638053.34 will give us the net asset value per unit how much is that rupees rupees 82.2608 82.2608 
Et samedi glu. Awesome. 2608, 2609 is okay. But you have to see the fifth decimal. If the fifth decimal is 5 or more than 5, then make it more 1. Otherwise, it will remain as it is. Are we clear with this question, everyone? Please confirm. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So one homework is what you are going to get. And that is the next question. Fair return. Tired? Yes. But, you know, it's this is when you understand everything and you are able to solve it, then the tiredness is also will give you a satisfaction that yes, we've productively used those three hours. We've understood some new things and we are on the right track. All right, Mr. Solanki, right? Chal. So your question number 16 will be your homework, guys. I will try to uh, upload this PDF immediately so that you can yeah, use it for your benefit. So, great guys. All clear? Time for me to say Hasta la vista. Two, three formulas that we learned today. When we start tomorrow, we will quickly revise them and We'll start with some new things. Bye bye. Hasta la vista. Take care. Keep smiling. Remember this. Good night. Thank you. Good night, guys.